Hi guys, Micro here. This is my series called Free to Play By The Way. This will be episode one, The Grind Begins. So let's get right into it. Right, so here we go. Hello everyone, and this is gonna be my new series of a free to play character from scratch, fully self-sustained, seeing how far we can get towards free to play max eventually. Even if we get enough money for a bond and stuff like that, we will not be buying a bond on this account. It will stay free to play. I've been doing a lot of high level content and I know that a lot of the game is high level now. So I do make quite a lot of high level content and content tailored for those type of people. But there's a lot of new people who play the game and with the mining and smithing rework and mobile when it comes out, there is new people coming to the game, new people hearing about the game or people coming back from a very, very long break. So I thought a good way of me mixing up the content and not just having all high level, I could make a lower level guide kind of progress series like I did with Nubaru, but for free to play. So I can show all of my progress, things I do, and just little tips and tricks for making money, tips and tricks for leveling as I go, things like that. That's the plan of this series, and I'm very excited to play this new account, and I'm really excited to just do mining and smithing as well. I'm 200 mil mining on the main, so I've kind of not been able to explore it properly. And yeah, I'm super excited. So let's get right into this. First thing that you definitely should do is get your free items from this guy in Burfoot. This captain, he gives you some teleport tabs, some potions, and a dwarven army axe. Dwarven army axe gives you extra things that you can get crafting XP from, from mining and woodcutting. And we're going to be doing a lot of mining and woodcutting today. So I really do think a dwarven army axe is 100% worth it when first starting out. Definitely go to this guy. He also gives you some starting money from those items if you sell them on the GE. Starting off chopping down some trees, we need to get some logs in order to train our fletching and fire making. Why not start off with some wood cutting with our dwarven army axe we just obtained. Wood cutting goes by pretty fast, we're already level 10. I didn't actually realise this, I was going to use the Varric and the Falador teleport tablets in order to go get the lodestones in those areas to make teleporting around easier. But their members items... At least I can sell them on the GE still, but it's kind of funny that he gives you members teleport tabs. But oh well, we'll just have to walk there. So yeah, I'm just going to grab all of the different teleportation routes, I guess, and run around. I've got to go get the Falador one, which is just over here. Then I can get the Edgefield, Varric, and Lumbridge, and they're pretty much the ones that I need. I guess Drain Oil could be useful too in Port Sarum, but I can get those ones a bit later. So now I just feel like getting Varric and Falador would be the most important. Then I'm going to start chopping down some more trees near the G. And then I can chop those trees down, maybe make some arrow shafts, buy some feathers from shops, make some headless arrows for my first GP. Now Fletching's a free-to-play skill. It helps out quite a lot. That's definitely going to help me on my grind as a free-to-play. Fletching is going to be very, very useful for GP as well. So I just got 15 wood cutting while making my way to the Varric Lodestone. I got 50 total, which is interesting, but I think I'm gonna do wood cutting to about 20 on normal logs instead of going to oaks. So I'm gonna need normal logs for both fire making and fletching. So I'm gonna need quite a few. There we go, we got the Varric Lodestone. Now we can like hover around the GE, do some fletching, do some fire making, wood cutting, and then move on from there. Maybe do some fishing and cooking and start getting our base skills up. There's level 20 wood cutting, but we're going to go to 21 so we can get the mithril hatchet when we go to the GE. There we are, 21 wood cutting. A myth hatchet is unlocked. Oh, we're getting into a big boy already. Something that I've been saving up is the wooden knots you get from chopping down trees with a Dwarven Army Axe. These give you 20 crafting XP each and I have 23 of them. That's a nice amount of starting crafting XP. It's free, it's pretty awesome. That's level 6. Awesome, that's perfect. Now it's time to fletch some arrow shafts ready to add feathers from a shop run onto. And hopefully we can make a bit of money with this and that'll be our starting cash. We got six fletching and we have 79 logs left over. We're going to fire make with these and get some levels there. Fire making XP is just silly. Level 10 in one inventory of logs. 
This was absolutely awesome to see and super cool. People in free to play seem pretty generous. There was a guy that asked if I just started off and I was like, yeah, because I was just fire making in the GE. He wanted to give me a welcome present, but obviously I said no, because I'm not accepting any donations, anything like that. And I said I appreciated him and things. It was really awesome. The guy was super friendly, super nice about it all. So a big shout out to Strong Goku one a very, very friendly free-to-play man. Keep doing what you're doing, my dude. Managed to get our 15 fire making. So the last couple of logs we got, we'll make the rest into arrow shafts to go with those feathers that we're about to buy. So even though these teleport tabs are members items, we got them for free at the start and you can actually sell members items on free to play. So that's helpful that we can sell those and then we've got the potions we can sell as well. Then the GP we get from these will go invest in feathers, feather these 2000 arrow shafts that we have. Then when we feather the arrow shafts we should be able to make a decent amount of starting cash. The first free to play shop that sells feathers is this one in Lumbridge so we can buy them here. There is a thousand feathers, six GP each, very nice, very easy. They don't sell feather packs, I don't know whether that's something that they just don't sell on free to play, but yeah, there's no feather packs in here, which kind of sucks because that would have been some extra GP. But either way, we can buy the fishing bait because I think that sells for five or six GP, so we're nearly doubling our money there as well. There is the Port Sarum Lodestone, and we can use the Port Sarum Shop as a free to play at least. There are the feathers. Harpoons are profit too, I believe, so if I buy one and check the price... Yeah, we might as well buy an inventory of those. We'll be able to make a bit of money with that. Then I can sell the fishing bait for 4 GP each, and I paid 3 GP each on that, so I managed to make 2k there. Doesn't sound like much, but it does all add up. Now we're going to feather these arrow shafts, see what fletching gains we get and see how much money we can sell them for. Right now we are level seven fletching. Let's see how high we get from the 2000. Managed to hit 15 and we're nearly 16 as well. So that was a decent amount of fletching XP and fire making XP from our level 22 woodcutting. Selling the headless arrows, they sold for 30 GP each. That's 60K. We're now on 85K GP. What we can do is we can buy more shafts and more arrows. And we can use those in order to level up our fletching even more and make even more money. That was my last 2k headless arrows done. And when I sell these I'll get another 62k which will put me up to 179k. That's a decent amount of money sitting there. These harpoons haven't sold so I'm going to lower them even further. It's only a couple of k but it will add to the pool of cash we got that should hopefully sell at that price. 7k extra. Now I think I'm just going to keep the cash for a bit. I feel like I'm going to go do some fishing and some cooking of the fish that we got. Every full inventory of crayfish I get I'll go over to the oven, cook them, bank them just over at the bank over there. Then we'll run back and fish more and just repeat this process till we're 20 fishing and 20 cooking. Managed to get 20 fishing, but cooking so much faster than fishing for some weird reason. Managed to get 28 cooking, which means we got 8 more cooking levels than fishing levels. I just thought that was kind of funny. Even with all the burns and stuff, still really good XP. Now that I've done some cooking and fishing, I am moving over to doing some mining. Again, using that Dwarven Army Axe that we gained to get some Lapis Lazulis, which give us crafting XP. And we're going to do tin and copper all the way to level 30 for some fast XP. Managed to make a total of 20,000 headless arrows. We're at 387k cash with 2,000 feathers left over, but we've hit our limit of our shafts. We also got 38 fletching, which is pretty damn awesome. Now I think my next plan is maybe doing some rune crafting in the rune span. I really need to get that up, so rune spam would be a good place to start, get like level 30 rune crafting or something, then move on to another skill again. So let's go do that. The rune span is at the top of the wizard's tower, which is south of Draenor village, and it is the best way to train rune crafting at lower levels for sure. Probably the best way to train rune crafting in free to play, unless you want to make money with like fire runes or something. I believe this is probably the fastest way. It's really nice and semi AFK. You just siphon the stuff that's around and about. The wraiths give slightly less XP, but they give you rune essence, and you need rune essence to siphon. So you do a mixture between the wraiths and all of the nodes, like mine storms, everything like that. And it's just such 
easy XP. There is 30 rune crafting. That was actually a lot faster than I thought it would be. I think I might go do some more mining and get loads stocked up for smithing. So let's go do some mining. But as you can see, mining the copper and the tin, I'm level 27 mining, I'm gonna go for 30. And uh, using the Dwarven Army Axe that I got for free, I've gained 70 Lapis Lazulis, and it doesn't say anything about the price because I haven't cut them. Then I can undo the geodes and you know, it should be pretty good. And I've got loads of bronze bars to make for smithing. So let's hope it goes well. So we're going to buy this ore box. I think the Runeite ore box is probably going to be like 50k or something. Probably a bit cheaper. How much was it? It was 25k. I'm happy to pay 25k for a rune ore box. That will increase my experience an hour doing mining. I'll probably just mine loads of myth. And then I'll buy the coal to go with the myth for smithing. I'll have to see. There is 30 mining coming in. Very, very awesome. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get 31 mining at tin and copper. And then once I hit 31, I'm going to go buy a pickaxe. I think I can use a myth pickaxe at that point, right? With the myth pickaxe at 31, I can then go do the myth over here, use my ore box to keep getting that. And I want to try and get as many lapis lazulis and maybe fill up my inventory of lapis lazulis by the time we hit 31 and uh, have a decent amount of ore. Probably should have bought this ore box a long time ago, but hey ho, we all make mistakes. I am free to play after all. Not really sure what I am doing. There we go, we did it. All right, so 31, we can now use a mithril pickaxe. Sounds good. And look how many lapis lazulis we actually got. That's so good. Right, let's go get our myth pick. Start mining some myth and uh, then we'll go into smithing and stuff all after. We'll probably buy the coal that we need. I don't really want to go mine coal. Coal's just going to be annoying to mine. Because I won't be using the Dwarven Army Axe anymore. I won't be getting any more lapis lazulis. So I'm going to cut 113 of them. See how much crafting XP we get? We get 20 XP a craft. That's actually kind of insane. But we got 16 crafting. So that was actually so much crafting XP just from Lapis Lazulis. Definitely use the Dwarven Army Axe if you're just starting off mining. That was awesome. So I'm going to buy some Mithril Stone Spirits for when we mine and we'll use our ore box and we'll see how much ore we can actually mine and how good it can actually be. Oh wow, that's actually really awesome. So a Stone Spirit costs 60 odd GP and our ore is 170 GP. All right, I'm buying loads of Stone Spirits. Going to buy as many as I have for my cash stack available to get me. Look at that and we got some change. Perfect. All right, we got 351 Mith Stone Spirits. We'll add the Mithril Pickaxe to our tool belt and uh, I guess we just go ham. So having the Dwarven Army Axe in my inventory means I get more XP for mining and stuff. And as long as this is in my tool belt, I'll use the Myth Run over the Dwarven Army Axe in my inventory. So we can just try and get loads and loads of XP, get to like level 48, and then we can start doing the next tier, get some Luminite. So we have just ran out of our Mithril Stone Spirits as we get this last one. With that Stone Spirit being used, we also have 41 Mining. 41 Mining allows us to use an Adamant Pickaxe when we come back to this, which means we can sell the Myth one, get an Addy one, and uh, get even more experience an hour, even more ores an hour and stuff. But I don't think I'm going to be mining without Stone Spirits, and I don't really have much money right now as I have zero GP because I spent it all. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go start up some smithing and uh, see how that goes. I don't think the geodes are like amazing money, but they're going to be okay. Because like if I spam click them, the spirit shards are 25 GP each. And then we have all of these other random items in gems. It adds up, doesn't it? It adds up. This is extra money alongside the mining. And because we have literally no money, anything we sell is, is so useful. So I'm really happy that these give you extra money. So over pretty much this morning... I've bought another 18,000 feathers and 20,000 arrow shafts. So we're going to make 18,000 headless arrows. Get some more flexion gains up from 38. We can sell these for like 10 GP profit each make. And you make 15 at a time. So that's like 150 GP profit every time you make one, which is just insane. So I should be able to make a decent amount of money with these. Just from 18k of those, that's like 200k profit nearly. And that's a lot of money for me right now. So a good tip to any free-to-play player... If there's a Fletcher or anything, you can use the French chat portables to help you out. If there is a Fletcher or anything that is a skill that can be trained with a portable, such as crafting, fletching, cooking, stuff like that, if there is one available in free to play, definitely use it because it gives you extra chances to get more items and it gives you more XP too. So definitely use those. So I got given random fashion skate by some viewers and stuff and um... I'm not accepting any donations on this account. I'll make that clear right now. But if you see me running around with different, you know, 
cosmetics like the penguin like the gobi backpack because the gobi backpack is swag as hell the rainbow halo and the elf boots and stuff like that they're purely cosmetic they don't give me any advantage at all and they're the only type of items i've accepted because i'm not accepting any donations that is going to give me any aid when training so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to walk around with some nice fashion scape, which people, I guess, like looking at. And like I said, not going to be accepting any GP or anything. We used all of the feathers we have. We have our 2,000 arrow shafts left over and we have 18,000 headless arrows to sell. We managed to get 43 fletching as well, which is insane. It's our highest skill by far, except for mining. So you can really see kind of the skills we have bias in right now, because mining and fletching are both super good to do in free to play early on. Now we're going to sell the headless arrows and we're going to start up doing some smithing so i guess sell these headless arrows and get into it so i deposited all my metals and i've got tin and copper ore which makes bronze bars so let's get smithing with some bronze bars well we don't get much xp for actually making the bronze bars as you can see we get one xp each which really is not much xp at all so we just need to make all of this into bronze bars this is the boring part then we have fun making the armor we have made 343 bronze bars i don't know whether to sell these or to actually get my smithing up with them i get 29 smithing with the knight sword quest which we're gonna go do in a second but if i can get good xp from these bronze bars i'll still smith them otherwise i can sell them for a decent amount of gp and that means we made a little bit of money with our mining as well then when we move to things like myth we just need to buy the coal when we've mined loads of myth anyway so we can make myth bars and then use those for xp i believe we need smith in level 30 so we could do a couple of bronze bars sell the rest get level 30 then go on to myth we can buy the coal it's very cheap that sounds like a plan we are rich now boys and girls we are rich filthy rich 540k for the headless arrows 43 fletching has made us like 600k gp which is just insane so we need two iron bars for the quest and a red berry pie once we have the red berry pie and the iron bars we can go do the quest and get 29 smithing i will take some crayfish that we cooked earlier and uh that will be our food in case we start getting hit by stuff we should be good mine the blue right quick 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 i don't want to die i don't want to die let's go oh actually that wasn't too bad there is a 12,725 smithing xp lamp let's use that we are level four so it might actually get us to 30 let's see we are 29 how close 295 xp away if we use a little tiny bit of those bronze bars sell the rest and then use myth with some coal that we buy and that should be really really good xp once we get onto myth so if we go smith and we smith like a bronze plate body because it requires the most bars just should give us the most xp Let's begin that project and let's go ham on some smithing. So that bronze plate body gave us like 100 XP. So I guess I just make some more bronze plate bodies and then we'll just sell them. Two or three more bronze plate bodies and we'll be 30. We made three more bronze plate bodies. We're very, very close now. So a bronze full helm should get us there. 30 smithing unlocks a lot of quests apparently, but not only does it unlock the quests, it unlocks mithril mithril is the main thing that we wanted to unlock and now we can make myth bars from all the myth ore we've mined by buying the coal required we got 708 because we have 708 myth ore that we mined ourselves so we're gonna make myth bars and then we're gonna use those myth bars to train our smithing 708 myth ore 708 coal that will make us loads of bars so let's make the bars over time and we get a bit more xp per bar now five xp per bar is much better than one remember to always have the highest possible heat that you can as soon as you drop below 66% heat, you want to heat again at the forge to get the quickest makes and the most experience per hour. If you do forget and it does go below 66%, you will get the same amount of XP, you'll just get it slower. The longer you take to make those myth play bodies, the more annoying it becomes. So getting it done as fast as possible, keeping your heat up high, sounds good. Okay, 35 smithing from our mithril plate bodies plus two. I'm going to make a third mithril plate body plus two. Then I'm going to try and make some mithril arrowheads and just see if I can make some money with those because you actually get okay XP for fletching by making myth arrows. I might be able to make a bit of money by making mithril arrowheads that people can use for fletching. We'll see. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to make loads of arrowheads. And if this is good money, then we make money while training smithing. So it could be a cool little thing to note. So I want to test this out. See how this goes. Because the arrowheads really don't take long to make. Look how much progress you make every hit. You can just fill up to full heat, make your progress, and you're done before you have to redo your heat, really. So I'm happy with that. One myth bar makes 75 myth arrowheads now. That means in one craft, we've made 2k. One craft takes us not even that long. Probably takes us, what, 20 seconds, if that? So I would get faster XP by doing the Myth Plate Bodies plus two, but they sell for 3k each and it's just not worth it. I can get so much more by just using one bar to get 2.4k. 
It's insane. <laughs> Myth arrowheads, here I come. We'll time how many arrowheads we can make in 10 minutes. We're gonna start with 1725 and we'll deduct that away from how many we have after 10 minutes. So let's start the timer and start the smithing. So 1.65 thousand of these at 33 GP each. We'll get out our calculator because we're a cool kid. We made 54,450 GP. We get out another calculator and this is the calculation for the bars. And we made 45,000 in 10 minutes, which means we times that by six, 272K GP an hour, just making mithril arrowheads for smithing XP as well. And we're 38 smithing now. So we got a whole level in that 10 minutes. I think that that's worth it when you're a free to play and that 270K at such a low level, Seems really worth it. I'm going to test Addy arrowheads at 40 smithing and Rune arrowheads at 50 smithing as well. And I'll come back to you guys with the rates there. But I feel like it's just going to get better and better as we go up. We got 40 smithing, which means we can test out Addy arrowheads soon. Oh my god. So one Addy bar gave me 11.2k worth of arrowheads. Is this serious? I'm going to go buy like 200 Addy bars and make them into arrowheads. This, that's nuts. That that amount of GP an hour. Oh, mm, wow. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to reset my timer. See how many I can make in 10 minutes. I'm a profit for 10 minutes. And we can work out an hourly profit again, just like we did with the Myth ones. And we'll do the same with Rune when we hit 50. Let's give it a try. Begin project. Start the timer. And we made 1,275 arrowheads. So again, we'll use our calculator. Oh my. For free to play at level 40 smithing. It's not the best experience now, but it is okay XP too. You're gonna be looking at a hell of a lot of money every hour. That is 924k profit. That is so much. That's nearly a mil an hour in free to play at level 40 smithing. I'm definitely gonna be making quite a lot of these to 50. Yeah, we did it. That will be the end of this video. Ending it with 50 smithing. Gonna pop to the GE, see how much profit we made with all of our Addy arrowheads. Should be pretty damn good. I sold some already and I'm making a hell of a lot of money, especially for the level that I am. It seems like adamant arrowheads are going down in price, but I still made tons of money and we nearly have 5 mil cash that's just insane to me that i have that much money in pretty much one day just over of free to play playing and we have 294 total level we managed to get 51 smithing in the end with the rest of our addy bars and we sold a lot of addy arrowheads for 148 gp each yesterday which is still insane and it's probably around 650 to 700k gp an hour instead of 900 which I'll still take. And we bought a mithril hatchet ready to do some wood cutting and fire making with that. Which we're probably going to do to start off tomorrow's episode. Not only are we going to do that. We also have some ceremonial sword designs given to us for free. While we were smithing the artisan's workshop. So I'll show you guys how to do that as well next episode. But yeah that will be it for this one. And I hope you guys did enjoy it. Do let me know if you're enjoying this series so far with the first episode. And if you'd like to see more episodes. If you could give this video a like, it shows that I know that you guys have enjoyed it and I should make more in the future. And do comment down below if you are having a good time watching this. I'm enjoying playing this account a hell of a lot. So hopefully you guys are enjoying watching as well. And until next time, see ya.